stadium has seen more Southwest Conference history than the house that Dope built. The Cotton Bowl actually had to be expanded during the reign of SMU's three-time All-American and 1948 Heisman Trophy winner, Dope Walker. In the 1970s, the Longhorns Earl Campbell often bowled his way through the stadium en route to the 1977 Heisman, capping an era of Texas domination. Today, from the Cotton Bowl, the Longhorns and Ponies in their 73rd and final Southwest Conference showdown, next on Raycon. We're inside the Cotton Bowl, and today the number 21 Longhorns of Texas against the SMU Mustang. And welcome to Dallas, Dave Barnett, along with Grant Tab. This is a week in which Texas hopes with a big win they can re-enter the top 20. They fell out because of a 28-point loss at Notre Dame last week. It was a much closer game than that until the end. Grant, it fell apart because of two things, really. Turnovers by Texas and all day long massive problems with all their special teams. Well, those two problems created problems in the game, but for the coaching staff, it was a season-long problem that they had to correct this week. Coach Makovic jumped in early this week and started making corrections in both areas, turnovers and also in that specialty team area. The specialty teams had a punt return on them for a touchdown. They had an extra point blocked for two points, and they had a high snap. You can't do that playing the kind of teams they're going to have to play for the championship. Too many turnovers, 21 points for Notre Dame. SMU again this week wonders which team is going to show up. Will it be the team that tied Texas A&M last year, beat Arkansas the first weekend this year, or the team that has been blown out by Navy and Wisconsin? Dave, I'm afraid it's a team that's been blown out by Navy and Wisconsin. They've had a group of injuries that have really affected this football team. They've taken three of their top players from the very beginning with uh, Flanagan and uh, Bardano and uh, of course Harvey is a young man that they were counting on very big in that area. They've got to let the players that they have play and go with it and try to move the ball. We're going to see them probably with two backs. This is one of the longest running rivalries in college football playing itself out probably for the final time tonight. Texas and SMU next. Today's Southwest Conference game is brought to you by Ford. By Dr. Pepper and your Dr. Pepper bottler. By Nations Bank. By your Mazda dealers. By Whataburger. And by Southwest Airlines. Nice day for football, warm and a bit windy inside the Cotton Bowl in Dallas as we take a look at today's Southwest Airlines game plan. The game plan this week for both teams uh, centers on the psychological aspect of a game plan. For Texas, they have to accentuate the positive. They've been able to move the football. They're knocking out over 400 yards per game. They've been able to score. They've got to focus in on that and not the negatives that slowed them down against uh, Notre Dame. As far as SMU, now they've got to eliminate those negatives that have been plaguing them all year. Number one, of course, the injuries that we talked about at the opening. That's been a major problem for them because they've had to shuffle guys in that really shouldn't be playing. And then, of course, their turnover situation has been bad all year long. They've had 15 turnovers to their opponents, too. Coming up, the Longhorns and the Mustangs from the Cotton Bowl. Be easy. Back again at the Cotton Bowl where Texas has won the toss and deferred. They will kick with Phil Dawson set to, with a big southerly breeze behind him to kick it away. One of the best young kickers, really one of the best kickers, period, in college football. From here in Dallas at Lake Highlands High School. And you already see the effect that the wind will have here today. Texas with a 2 and one record, their Southwest Conference opener. They have won 20 consecutive Southwest Conference openers, 67, 12, and 1 through the years in their first league game. And seven straight over the ponies by an average margin of 39 to 12. That dates back to 1985. Crowd still coming in. In the State Fair of Texas inside the Cotton Bowl, a very deep kick, and Jimmy Moore, eight yards deep, will handle it on a knee, and with a touchback, it'll be the Mustangs from their 20-yard line, and today's Nations Bank starting lineup 
for SMU with, uh, again, Chris James for the injured Ramon Flanagan. Probably will remain their starting quarterback all year unless Flanagan comes back late in the year. Dante Womack is a running threat, averaging almost five yards per carry. Better than four, four speed. The sophomore from Little Rock has had some big days, even in losses. And up front, Keith Childs, according to Tom Rossley, their best blocker so far this year. 340-pounder. Right next to Brandon Kidd, who they think may be their best NFL prospect post-death penalty here. Swing out of the backfield, lots of room on first down. Womack to the 34-yard line, a gain of 14 yards on the first play of the day for SMU. And the nation's bank defensive starters for Texas. They have really had to shuffle their defensive line because of injuries. Akins and Clark both nose guards normally, but Clark starts at tackle today. Tyson King has been their leading tackler on the year. 42 stops in their first three games and three sacks. And Bryant Westbrook, the best of a fine crop of all junior defensive backs. On the ocean side, California. Womack on the toss. And drags a couple of tacklers. Finally, Chris Carter following him out of bounds at the 44-yard line, and he's close for the Ponies' second first down on their second snap. So Grant, offensively for SMU, an auspicious start, and defensively for Texas, kind of a repeat of what they've suffered through for the last several years. SMU came into this game uh, with the idea of having two backs in the backfield. They haven't been doing that this year. They're also going to be trying to control the ball with short passes, the little swing pass that we saw in the first play, and the run. That one was intended for Brian Harmon, who will line up at fullback and in the slot today, and on the rebound, it was almost a look what I found catch for Kevin Thornall. SMU has no business running up inside. This uh, reshaped uh, Texas line has a lot of huge people inside. So in order for them to control the football, keep Texas offense off the field, you're going to see the short passes, you're going to see the curl routes, the flat routes. Chris James, sophomore from Arlington, Sam Houston, looking at third and one. Opening drive of the day has gone well until now, and Harmon is pushed back and does not have the first. He's a couple of feet shy. That time, a nice surge by uh, the three up front and the linebackers, and the first contact came from Akins, the big near 300-pound nose guard. Well, you've got a lot of weight inside that defensive line, even though they're uh, playing out of position some. We have two nose guards lined up in there. And uh, what happens is that uh, they're just using the beef. They're not real sharp on their techniques, but uh, they're playing strong inside, and that's not the place to run against this Texas defense. It looked like for about a half second they thought about, should we go for it here, and thought better of it. Anthony Scotty will kick it away to Chris Carter. Uh, that was a very wise decision. And not a surprising one. Not at all. Scotty just over Akins, who came straight up the middle. Carter with a fair catch. At the 19-yard line. 37-yard kick, not bad, into this stiff a breeze for Anthony Scott. And we look at the Texas Longhorns under James Brown. His number is good enough for the uh, conference lead in passing and total offense and the number eight spot nationally. He's joined up front by uh, Mitchell and Williams, and Mike Adams has had a spectacular start off last year's knee injury. He is 10th in the country in yards receiving per game. Dan Neal, according to John Makovic, every bit at guard, the equal of Blake Brockermeyer, who was their uh, top tackle a year ago, a first-round NFL draft pick. High throws with the junior from Cypress Creek. First down, off tackle goes Sean Mitchell. Four, two, or three. Craig Swan, who was a question mark, only practiced yesterday, coming off uh, bad thigh bruise against the Wisconsin, did not play there. Up front, Wendell Washington gets a start, their fastest defensive lineman. Kagan Morgan and uh, Cornell Parker look for their names to be called pretty often today. Cornell Parker, they think probably their best defensive back they've had here since they returned to football in 1989. Senior from Washington, D.C. Brown looking deep off play action, and there's his favorite target, 
Mike Adams for 22 yards over the middle. Mike Adams is having an outstanding year. He uh, has moved into the another number seventh position as far as receivers are concerned, and he had about 145 yards last week against the uh, University of Notre Dame. He's a real fine uh, receiver, and he's got great hands. Boy, Brown laying it right on target to him with a questionable shoulder not showing up there. Baylor with a field goal on their first possession of the day. That's all either team has done so far. And Waco again on target. Adams inside the SMU 40 for 17 more yards. Adams uh, is flanked to the right. He makes a good sharp cut. Turns it to the inside, and the ball is thrown perfectly. And it's a great catch, a good hit, but he hangs on to the ball. He's known as the uh, playmaker for the University of Texas offense. That's his nickname. Another look on the Dr. Pepper roundup, some of the early games. Playmaker is the nickname of another receiver here in Dallas by the name of Mike. Mitchell right into Wade Smith, the nickel outside linebacker. Mitchell, I'm sure, expected more than he got out of that run as Smith, at just 200 pounds listed at linebacker, came up for a big stop. He's their fastest linebacker at 4-9, uh, and that is uh, a 4-4-9. That's, uh, you know, excellent speed for a linebacker. Gain of one second and nine. Mitchell and Ricky Williams, the freshman pullback, split behind Brown. A lot of early work for Sean Mitchell in this game. And the ball pops free well after he's down at the 35-yard line. Driven there by Seth Stinton. Sean Mitchell and Ricky Williams through uh, this uh, first half of the season has averaged 149 yards per game between the two of them. So they are a workload in there. Great block. Knocks somebody flat on the ground. <laughs> Here comes it. Let's look at the other end of it. Coming across. Oh, man, that was an outside block. Turned his head completely around. Good tackle right here. Almost pulled the ball loose. Just three yards. Third and six. Texas a good third down team so far this year. Wayne McGarity has checked in. A long setback. Brown right at the line needed for the first down for the third time on this opening possession hooks up with Mike Adams and it should be very close for a first down. His arm looks 100% today. Well, he's had some uh, shoulder problems for the last three weeks and uh, they've tried to rest him during the week. He uh, is a very stubborn young man. Coach Makovic said that uh, he really wants to practice. Coach Mack wants to lay him out at least a couple of days and let that arm begin to heal up. But uh, he is throwing well today. He's throwing with a lot of power in his arm. And, of course, it's the uh, Mike Adams show up to this point. John Makovic, in fact, said that he toyed this week with the idea of resting James Brown altogether, but figured that the, the explanations that would come from such a decision, the fallout, if anything went wrong, would probably make it not worth it because Brown physically, as we have seen, is up to it. But he thought perhaps... James could have benefited from a week off, but it won't happen. James glad it isn't going to happen. Big running room up the middle. Mitchell to the 16-yard line and a 13-yard pickup. The Texas ground game at last on this drive equal to the passing game with a junior from Austin, LBJ High School. Sean Mitchell, great runner. Here's a outstanding block coming out gets right at his legs John Craig uh, Swan uh, is having some problems another first and ten Texas from the 16 Brown has had no pressure whatsoever wide open Matt Davis for the touchdown I don't know how an offense can have it any easier than Texas did on their first possession. Fourth catch of the year for Davis Jr. from Fort Worth, his first touchdown. Straight up the field. Brown, a perfect four for four 
on the drive, 61 yards through the air. And for the extra point, Phil Dawson trying to get another streak going. He had his uh, 55th in a row blocked at Notre Dame last week. First thing you want to watch is the amount of time. You don't even see a blue shirt in the picture when he throws the football. You have that much time, and with an arm like that, you're going to complete a lot of passes, which he's just done four for four. Matt Davis, not known as the speed receiver for Texas, but a good 10 yards worth of pad between Matt and the defender. Touchdown Texas back after this from Whataburger, celebrating 81 years of Southwest Conference football. All four of those James Brown uh, completions to the same position, three to Mike Adams and one to his backup, Matt Davis, for the touchdown. Five minutes into the first quarter. Phil Dawson will again have to have uh, help on his second kickoff of the afternoon. We're joined up here by injured SMU quarterback Ramon Flanagan, who would much rather be down there, but we appreciate you spending some time with us up here. I'm really honored to be here. Painful experience, I know, having to, uh, as much as you love being around the team and, and love playing football, to have to sit out this season. Larry, I just really miss being a part of the, uh, you know, the team atmosphere right now. Boy, as long as Dawson has this win behind him, don't look for any returns by SMU. They, again, will start from their 20-yard uh, line. I is there any chance at all, I understand you're getting an MRI and a bone scan done on your hip, is there any chance... If that news is good, you could come back this year. Um, I'll physically be ready to come back um, towards the last couple of games of the season. The, the question right now is whether they're going to allow me to come back um, and risk not having a chance at a medical register. So that's the problem facing us right now. Your replacement came in and won the Arkansas game for you. Uh, tell me what you think of Chris James' play so far this year. Uh, once I got hurt, you know, it was never a doubt in my mind that Chris James is a trick play right now. Uh, Dante Womack. With a flag down, Chris Carter up for the tackle. That's a play you scored on in Austin last year, Womack taking a direct snap. They put that back in this week just for Texas. Um, you know, Chris James has never been a question mark in my mind. I knew he was going to come in and play well, and he has to this point. Holding penalty, Dave. James comes out, does a good job as a thespian. He's acting very well. Direct snap uh, to uh, Womack and... Uh, we get a clip over there, a holding penalty. Well-designed design scheme, but uh, didn't work this time against Texas. You guys, and we talked about this uh, at the outset, you're, you're good enough to beat Arkansas. You're good enough to play well at Oklahoma. Tie a and last year. Other weeks, the bottom falls, falls out early. Do you know coming into a game exactly which SMU team is going to show up? That, that's the bad thing. You never know. Coach Rossi doesn't know any, anybody can't... Can, get their finger on it right now. Um, we're still a relatively young team, and you're going to see that from, from time to time from this team. Markoff back to their nine-yard line. First down and 20. Rafi Cooper in motion. And Womack with a nice cutback for about five yards. Runs right into Robert Reed, the outside linebacker on the strong side. How much during the course of the game do you, uh, do you coach Chris James? I, I pretty much try to let Chris James um, get the experience on the field. Um, you know, I'll, I interject whenever I can, but more than less, more than anything, I try to stay out of his way and let him be the quarterback because right now he's our starting quarterback. And, and I don't want to be constantly standing over his shoulder and being a shadow looming so long. Um, Coach uh, Rossley told me yesterday that you have a desire to uh, coach in the future. Uh, what is your thinking on this game of football and coaching? Um, I've been around a lot of great, great coaches, and I see how they can help young men. You know, the great coaches I've been around have really helped me out a lot. You know, Coach Ross has given me a chance out of high school, when a lot of people, Baylor Bears, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't give me a chance. So, <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Subliminal shows so up. So I, I know that, that coaches can really have a great influence on young men's lives. I mean, Coach Taft's influences many, many lives, not just, just uh, the ones at Baylor. Well, I'm glad that you're heading that direction. Uh, you'll be a great coach and have a great career. Ramon, we know you're itching to get back down to the field. We appreciate that you're, you're sharing uh, some of your afternoon with us up here. Thanks. I'm really honored to share the booth with you guys. All right. Ramon Flanagan, we hope to see back later the next year quarterbacking SMU. Romack ankle tackle by Akins, plugging the middle up front on a third and 12. And from deep in their own end against this big wind, SMU will have to kick it away. Akins 
down to 292, the strongest Longhorn maybe ever. He was a three-time state powerlifting champion at Paris High School. Texas dropping Carter and Mike Adams back. SMU specialty teams have been pretty consistent this year, and they feel that this may be one area where they can uh, have a little inroad against the University of Texas with Texas problems. Adams maintains his balance. Ran about 20 yards for what nets out as a five-yard return of a 33-yard kick. Scotty did a good job hemming him into the side. Jackson Moore made the tackle. Seven to nothing, Texas. Peruna and... Bevo, the dueling mascots on the grass uh, field in the Cotton Bowl. Today's game being brought to you in part by the Texas Farm Bureau. What could be more appropriate? From the SMU 45, Texas with their second offensive possession of the day, leading 7 to nothing. Near perfect on their first drive. And again all day, but Brown will decide to keep Head to the sideline and gets swarmed under at the 43-yard line. Chased over there by Wade Smith and Mac McKinney. Baylor adds another field goal. Jarvis Van Dyke had been struggling, but he has a 6-0 lead for Baylor. And Alabama shutting out Georgia's second quarter. South Carolina early up on LSU in Columbia. Brown with a net gain of just one. Second down to nine just inside the 44. Ricky Williams is the lone setback. Brown with an option that keeps for about five. And it'll bring up third down and four. Seeing Grant, the many abilities of James Brown, he can uh, bolt from the straight drop back, or he can take it on an option, round end as he did there. That's an interesting call because of his shoulder problems for the last two or three weeks uh, to allow him the opportunity to carry the ball and get hit. He's going to scramble enough, but uh, I think Coach uh, probably is now convinced that uh, his shoulder is fine. On third down, Adams to the Texas bench. Ricky Williams' first carry of the day, and he'll come up shy of the first. Dewey Evans, because of... A number of injuries at quarterback gets a start today. Redshirt freshman from Missouri City. A lot of young men on that defense uh, that have not played a lot of football, and uh, right now they're struggling to keep this Texas out of the end zone on their second possession. And this is a little bit interesting. It's fourth and two, SMU's 37, and the punting unit comes on. Mark Schultes. We'll try to hang this one straight up. With this win, a 55-yard field goal would be within Phil Dawson's range. They may be rethinking this decision. Texas calls timeout. Actually, they were one man short. So. Even better reason to call time, which they do with 6.10 to go first quarter. Texas worked all week on improving special teams. First time they get the punting unit on with uh, redshirt freshman snapper Jay Humphrey. Not enough men on the field, and they have to burn a timeout. You don't want to burn a timeout like that. That uh, can be troublesome down toward the end of the half. Really good snap, and almost down at the one foot line by Wayne McGarrity, or Quentin Wallace it was, who almost... Now that one, they, they now rule that he did get the ball down inside the one. First indication looked like touchback. Now they change it back again, and it is a touchback, and SMU goes from the 20. Let's watch. This Wallace, is a, a wide receiver, good hands. It's great effort by Wallace. Right foot comes down in the end zone. It is a touchback. Good call by the officials being right on top of it. That could have been a disaster for SMU and a big plus for Texas. Mustangs thus start 80 yards away, not 99.9 yards from the Texas goal. 6.02 first quarter. They trail 7 to nothing. And James 
with this protection. Another swing to Womack. Tyson King and Taji Allen stop Dante Womack for a loss of about two. Texas has already made an adjustment uh, on that swing pass operation. They have dropped the linebackers uh, a little bit wider and to the outside. They can still read the inside runs, but they've got the three big guys inside, and they're forcing the runs outside. So that's a pretty good move by Texas. Move those linebackers out a little bit, get them in the flats to give you some help. And he's looking second and uh, officially 11. They come with three wides to the near side. Romack, room up the middle. Robert Reed wraps him up near the 24-yard line. Chris James missed spring practice, and well, that's got to really be figuring in for him. The uh, the lost chance to get more background. He also missed the final five games last year because of a rotator cuff injury. Despite that rustiness, very effective against uh, Arkansas after Flanagan went down on the very first play. Dave, Robert Reed likes to hum the Russian national anthem to help him get mentally ready for the game. Womack driven out by King. Texas, as you said, Coach, reacting much better with the passes along the flank. And a leading tackler with the stop here on Womack. Number 50, Tyson King, is uh, positioned perfectly. He's tied with Tony Brackens with the most tackles, 94. Had a knee scoped in the offseason, but he's moving very well right now. Who didn't have a scope for Texas defense last year? Scotty to punt from his 10. Struggling against the wind, but much improved this year. He has uh, allowed only seven returns in the first four games for a little over six yards per return. This time, though, Carter with a little bit better effort than that. At the 46 of the ponies, a 35-yard kick and a 14-yard return by Chris Carter. Our telecast today, a copyrighted presentation of the University of Texas, Southern Methodist University, the Southwest Conference, and Raycon Incorporated, intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without prior written consent is forbidden. Boy, all this beautiful grass, and they make Bebo stand on a patch of AstroTurf in the end zone on the concrete. So close and yet so far. Brown play action. To the side where his tight end, Pat Fitzgerald, is wide open for another first down. Driven out by Smith and Evans after a pickup of 14 yards. That's almost a cruelty to Anna. He is no, no farther away from... Good grazing in about 10 yards. But there he will stand. Well, there's the rest of the day. There's a cause and respect uh, relationships on this uh, whole concept of keeping Bevo on the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> I think I follow him. Texas moving almost at will, but leading by just seven. Brown pump fake keeps. James Brown inside the 20 on one of his best scrambles of the year, 14 yards. This is a very simple play. He's going to come out, to try to throw back. Man's covered as he comes out of the backfield. And here he goes, pump fake, pull the ball down, make the cut inside. Uh, do a double jump and uh, turn it upfield. I, I tell you, he is a great athlete, and he can throw the ball. Mitchell with the pitch. Good trip up by Jackson Moore. Drove him right into the arms of Craig Swan and Dewey Evans. Boy, that cornerback, Jay Harvey, was to be the starter. He's out four or five weeks, had thumb surgery yesterday. Donald Mitchell was to be... Harvey's replacement hurt an ankle in practice Thursday. So a battlefield promotion was in effect in the late week practices for Evans, the redshirt freshman. Mitchell joined by Jared Coleman now in the I formation. Now Davis goes in motion on second and five. And Sean Mitchell on a delayed cutback he is near what would be first and goal, but a flag is down. 
Tackle for the ponies made by Jackson Moore. Jackson Moore is a member of the 3.0 club. Uh, both of these squads and their coaching staff puts great emphasis on academics. Uh, SMU has, for the last two years, gotten a CFA award for uh, outstanding graduation rates. The University of Texas has increased under John Makovic. And both of them have clubs that uh, you have to have three points or better to get in. And uh, this young man, uh, Jackson Moore, is uh, in the 3-0 club for SMU. All Southwest Conference academic selection. Sophomore from Memphis. Holding Texas was the call. That is, in effect, a 15-yard penalty because Mitchell had the 7, and they drive the line of scrimmage all the way back outside the 22. 243 and counting in the first. Mitchell again. Cut back inside the 15, away from Neal. Close to first and goal. Boy, Sean Mitchell erases, erases every bit of the penalties effect. Finally dragged down by Cornell Parker. Sean Mitchell is really an outstanding back. He's got great acceleration, and uh, he, he's got leg strength that uh, is uh, far beyond his size. Those two running backs uh, are really a great combo for the University of Texas. The best they've had probably is a combo in the last uh, several years. Well, you got to go back at least to Eric Metcalf since they've had that kind of speed. That's seven years. Third and one to sneak by Brown for first and goal at the five. Interesting thing about SMU, anytime uh, this year anyone's gotten inside the red zone, which is a 20-yard line in, uh, they've had 87% uh, uh, scoring uh, in that position. So this does not... Uh, Look good for SMU on the five-yard line with the University of Texas. They're about a 90% chance that uh, Texas will score. Coming into this game, 15 trips inside uh, the 20 by the opposition, and 13 of the 15 have produced points. Wallace and Adams both on the near side. Williams is the setback on first and goal. And it is Ricky Williams trying to bounce outside into the arms of Fred Swan. And he will lose a couple. This man leads the conference in tackles about 19 per game so far this year. Four sacks and a career high of 25 tackles in the loss to Navy. Two sacks. You're talking Mike Singletary numbers in. Big numbers. Mitchell returning to tailback. Sean Mitchell, touchdown. From seven yards out, it's coming back on an illegal motion penalty against Texas. And has already struck up Texas fight, but this one's coming back. Takes the points off the board for the horn. Motion on the extent, replay, second down. Well, except for that, exactly what John Makovic had in mind on that play is Mitchell basically untouched, scampered into the end zone. Very simple play, just turn, get it to the tailback with good blocking up front. Second major penalty, not necessarily for yardage mark off, but for the timing on this Texas drive. Round to the end zone, and a flag is going to be thrown this time on Cornell Parker for either holding or pass interference. Very good uh, ISO here. We're all the way on... Uh, Adams, he makes the cut that he's supposed to make. That is a definite pass interference, and uh, that'll be uh, a big penalty that puts him back now down inside the 10-yard line. That's a pretty good matchup there. Adams against Cornell Parker, one of the best cover guys in the conference. Well, Cornell Parker is an outstanding uh, athlete, and uh, when you get Adams uh, matched up against him, uh, something's going to give, and uh, he just wouldn't allow it to happen. I believe if he hadn't have interfered, it would have been a touchdown, so uh, it was probably uh, one of those uh, situations that uh, he just took a gamble to try to get away with it. 
So the price is Texas lines up now first and goal from just outside the one yard line. Two tight ends and Williams to set back. Takes the give. Is he in or not? No signal yet. And apparently stopped just shy by Craig Swan's hit. Got a foot short. He's called the Hitman from Quitman. And you're going to see why right here. Craig Swan uh, steps up into the line and slides off like a good linebacker, makes the uh, contact behind the line of scrimmage, drives through with his legs, and keeps a strong running back with good leg power out of the end zone. SMU has called its second time out of this first quarter with 18 seconds to go. They'll look at second and goal. Tom Rossley really deserves much better luck than he's had. Tom Rossley is one of the finer coaches in this country. He's proven it. He, he amazes me. He has such a positive attitude. So many bad things have happened uh, throughout the last two or three years in terms of key injuries. Losing Flanagan uh, changes this offense completely because of Flanagan's ability to run as well as throw the football. Bardano, he loses uh, before the season even starts. Now, you put him in there with Swan, and you've got two uh, Southwest Conference caliber linebackers. Then, of course, to lose Evans, who was operated on yesterday, uh, you've got uh, three key players out, but yet uh, Tom Rossley just keeps going on with that positive attitude, putting faith in those guys that are playing. He says he tries never to mention the injuries because he doesn't want the, the seed planted mentally but they can use that as an excuse when we talked to him yesterday i had to bring up the injuries he, he did not want to talk about it and and that's the way it should be but the injuries are a key factor texas with a stack eye look and now Fitzgerald breaks out of it wayne mcgarity is checked into the backfield alongside william second and goal fumble snap McGarity dives on it, but a loss back to the six-yard line. And that, apparently the last play of the first quarter. What an erratic ending. Two major mark-offs against Makovic's Horns. Pass interference against Parker sets him up first and goal on the one. They back up on the fumble to the six-yard line. And the second quarter will begin with Texas hanging on to just that seven-point lead. Grant Taft, you're looking at the uh, SMU team of the 80s, and in particular, Eric Dickerson. They were honored between quarters down on the field at the Cotton Bowl. Reassembled for a nice reunion. Golf tournament yesterday, the ball game today. There's some players down there. SMU had some great teams, nationally ranked teams, especially the early part of that decade. Eric has a lot less hair now than he had uh, back in those days. Third and goal for Texas from the six-yard line as we begin the second quarter. Down to the end zone and picked off by Parker. We said that matchup with Adams would be something to watch. Parker victimized on a pass interference call late in the first quarter, but comes back strong and intercepts James Brown. Dave, inside the 10-yard line, uh, Texas with a first down has scored five out of seven times. And this time they didn't score because Parker steps right in the way of the pass. It was a little bit underthrown, maybe a lot underthrown. Something James Brown just didn't do last year. Only two interceptions, all of 94. That's his sixth of 95. In just game four, SMU has not had much of a turnover ratio this year. Womack with a flag down. Should the play stand, has a first down across the 30-yard line. Pickup of 11, Randy Crystal is the referee today. Coming back, another holding call. Looks like Chris Campbell, who has... Uh, Enter the backfield for SMU, holding Taji Allen. Campbell, number 25. This is one of the best running plays that SMU's had uh, all day long. But you can see the uh, holding. 
may not have been Campbell, but definitely Allen was being held. Yep. And back. SMU marches to their 10. Their third penalty. The two against Texas on the drive that ended a moment ago in that interception. So still seven to nothing Longhorns in the first minute of the second quarter. Dante Womack, maybe two. Chris Akins, pretty active so far, at nose guard to Texas. Well, Stoney Clark, uh, number 55, uh, senior, 200 or 320 pounder, and Chris uh, Akins in there at 292 pounds. There's not a lot of uh, uh, room to run inside. Akins last year was the Southwest Conference newcomer of the year. Uh, and he, uh, of course, is the strongest guy on the squad, bench pressing uh, a ton and a half. Womack, 17-yard line ridden down there by Gray Mosier, who Texas thought might have to start ahead of schedule this week because of the injuries to Tony Brackens and Brian Vosick. Mosier, a redshirt freshman out of Bernie, was questionable all week himself. He's got a knee problem. Gary Darnell, the Texas defensive coordinator, having to mix and match and scramble because of his injuries up front, kind of the way SMU is in their secondary. Now, Texas, Grant was thinking today maybe about some 2 5 alignments. Pass two call intended for Rocky Cooper. Westbrook had the cover. Now, utilizing uh, five linebackers with the two big guys uh, up on the line. What uh, they plan to do with that, and, and we can still see it if uh, SMU begins to hurt them with a the pass, they can do a lot of blitzing from that and then get a lot of pursuit with the linebackers, still anchor it with the two big guys up front. Adams dropping back near his 30, and for the first time, Scotty will get the benefit of this big win. Sophomore from Beverly Hills. California averaging better than 42 yards per kick. Beauty here. Adams fair catches at the 40. Very high and 44 yards for Scotty. We'll be back after this message from Whataburger celebrating 81 years of Southwest Conference football. Storyline brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Texas 132 total yards. Brown 5 of 5. 75 yards and a touchdown pass to Matt Davis. Good start for Sean Mitchell. SMU in this game, despite just 43 total yards, 28 of which have come from Dante Womack. They're in it, uh, Dave, because of some mistakes that Texas has made, and I think some great effort by the SMU defense. The offense with SMU has not helped them as much as uh, they needed to help them. Texas mistakes on the last drive, the reason it's still just 7 up. Brown all day to the side and overthrows Adams, who stumbled on his cut. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage with the linebacker, Wade Smith, and you got to like Adams' chances in that matchup. Now in the third quarter in Waco, six to nothing. That is six straight shutout quarters by the Baylor defense. They've got a big defense and a very uh, strong defense and a very fast defense, and when you have those three, you've got a chance to shut some people down. This is Mitchell. To the 48-yard line. Well, we were in Raleigh and saw them throw North Carolina State uh, in their home stadium. A shutout, 14-0, the first time in the history of uh, North Carolina State Stadium they had not scored. Eric Tomlin, number 91 for SMU, inside linebacker, uh, steps in and makes a good stop after a big game. They'll give him eight yards and third and two. Williams for the first and a lot more to the 45-yard line. Parker with the tackle, nice clearing block through that hole by Dominic Bustamante to clear Ricky Williams, the freshman from San Diego. Keep an eye on Dominic Bustamante all the way. He's got great powers. He just turns the uh, defensive lineman of SMU. Parker able to avoid Dominic. Not that easy. He's 6'5", about 300. Senior from Corpus, first and 10, Texas. 
Brown again off the play fake over the middle in traffic and a nice grab by Davis for the first down to the 27. 18 yards on Matt Davis's second catch today. Brown after a short uh, fake drops straight back. No pressure again. Throws it right into the sweet spot. Matt Davis, 86, makes the catch and uh, holds on to the ball. But did you see how much room McGarity would have had had it not been a play fake? Yes. Well, and that made it look like he mistakenly failed to give him the ball. That was the call. First and ten. Williams following Dan Neal up the sideline on the foot race. He is knocked out at the two by Ken Neal. And they'll mark him at the three. Dan Neal at right guard clearing a 24-yard pickup by Ricky Williams. Take a look at this replay. You're going to see some extraordinary blocking on the outside perimeter. Dan Neal, right here, making a block, slides in, makes a second block, clears him for the uh, big run down to the two-yard line. Good effort by Ken Neal, preventing six first and goal at the three. Trying to add to a 7 nothing lead, early moment, second quarter. And Sean Mitchell banging his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Mitchell for Texas. Sean gets the one back he thought he had at the end of the first quarter, which was called back on motion. Wait a minute. This one not officially in the books yet. A flag down at the five-yard line. And a... Dead ball non-contact indication against Texas. Which apparently, since it's after the play, will not affect the touchdown. It stays on the board. Touchdown on the board. Uh, some good blocks up front. There was an excellent line surge of the uh, Texas line that time, uh, demonstrating their strength and power. Often out of the hold of Mark Schultes. He tied Jeff Ward's school record of 54 straight PATs before his next attempt was blocked last week. First time Dawson had had one block since ninth grade. He's two for two today. And it's 14 up. What's the line surge coming off the ball? And number 89, Steve Bradley makes an excellent block to clear into the end zone. See him standing straight up. Screen the... Uh, way right into the end zone. And some nice weaving by Mitchell. 14 nothing more. Back one half of the most prolific running tandem in NCAA history. Craig James finished his SMU career as the third leading rusher in conference history. Also teamed up here with Jeff Courtright on what was at the time the longest pass play in league history. 96 yards against North Texas in his senior season of 1982. He would be here as a member of the All-80s team. I understand he'd be busy, I guess, today. On I, the air. I saw too much of that guy in the 80s. All he's, together, I'm he's sure. He's an outstanding player. Well, when you think of the yardage he piled up as, in effect, I guess, the backup for Eric Dickerson, if that's one guy, then you're talking about from the I-back position for SMU, a total that probably no one would ever come close to. They would have surpassed Tony Dorsett because the two of them together were one and three in conference history with Earl Campbell in the middle. That's what they did together. Well, they were truly outstanding. I, I've never seen two better backs in any backfield in my coaching career than those two young men. Well, because of the uh, non-contact foul, Texas has to kick from the 20-yard line. Trey Thomas again has to hold it for Dawson. This one angling to the 30. Jimmy Moore with a nice return to midfield in good field position at last for the Ponies. 21-yard return. Dawson, the kicker, making the tackle. That 15-yard penalty uh, is a very tough penalty when you're having to kick into the wind. There's a good breeze blowing out of the south. So that made the ball hang up. The 15-yard penalty uh, made a big difference. And now SMU's got great field position at the 50-yard line. Pretty steady all day. Overcast and foggy 
this morning, but it is long since burned off, and it's pretty warm down there. It's supposed to be mid-80s at least by the end of the afternoon. 14 nothing Longhorns, 11.41 to go in the first half. James sees the pocket collapse in a sack back at the 40-yard line. A combination of Stoney Clark and Shane Rink. Clark normally a nose guard, lining up most of today at defensive tackle. Out in West Texas, where I come from, this is called wind rowing. You just uh, line up and move everything in your way right out of the way, and they just collapsed and crushed the quarterback, James. Stoney, now a senior from East Texas, Winona. His hometown, Gladewater, is high school. On the draw, Warnock. Unable to get away from Tyson King. And he'll settle. He'll settle for about two, if that, on the pickup. Tyson King's another one of those good students in high school. He was uh, and has been at uh, Texas, the AD honor roll student for four semesters. So third down, they need 17. They have yet to pick up a third down conversion. Rolling pocket on the run, way behind the intended target, Kevin Cornell. Actually, the nearest man there was Jason Reeves. Rolling over in coverage from outside linebacker. SNU does nothing with their best field position. But they go backwards from midfield and will punt from their 43. Jason Reeves uh, is one of those youngsters that recovered from an knee injury last year. He broke a kneecap. He's a great athlete. He's 4'5 uh, on the uh, 40, and he's a 32-inch uh, vertical jumper. This won't go for much distance unless they get a roll. They do. Adams to the 21-yard line. With the Mustang saying he can signal fair catch. They all saw it. The officials now conferring, and a flag is down, and apparently they're going to throw it on Adams for returning this kick. Well, that was pretty good negotiation. Now Crystal in on the discussion. Let's see. Is this a fair catch signal? Yes, it is. Uh, that is a, a fair catch signal. As uh, long as he gets the uh, hand above the head, which he had, uh, and waves it, it is a fair catch signal. Even if he's shading his eyes, it still constitutes a fair catch signal. And so I'd say those uh, SMU players uh, did a good uh, courtroom procedure there in their argument and ended up uh, winning the case. And officially, that is a delay of game penalty when you return it after making the fair catch signal. Let's take a look at this week's Ford Southwest Conference updates. And uh, again in Waco, Baylor 6, Texas Tech 24th in this week's poll, their first ranking in six years. Yet to get on the board against the Bears. Rice on the road. Six of their next seven, including this afternoon up in uh, West Point at Mikey Stadium against Army. Houston and TCU from Fort Worth are game of the week next week at noon central time. Hope you can join us from Amon Carter Stadium for that one. Texas from their... 11. James Brown, the short underneath completion to Fitzgerald and the tight end from Agora, California, who tied a school record with three touchdown catches last week among his four grabs at Notre Dame. Again, there's just too much time for Brown to uh, make his choices. SMU has got to put some pressure. They may have to start bringing some linebackers because Brown has no pressure. Jeffrey Clayton has checked in at fullback in the eye. Run, 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 run! Here comes Mitchell. Almost got the corner turned, and then Parker drives him out at the 32. But the ground game is starting to produce some pretty big chunks. Watch Neal, number 69, make an excellent block. He's been doing that uh, all year long. He certainly is one of the better uh, linemen in the nation this year, offensive lineman. He has uh, size and speed. 
I think for the University of Texas, he may be the best in uh, three or four years that they've had. Well, they say their strongest offensive lineman ever in school history. every game of his career. What did we say? Big chunks. This one for a first down to the 40. For Ricky Williams, the hit by Parker. Texas' goal coming in was to uh, shorten this game with their ground attack. They felt they could run on SMU, understandably so because of their injuries. Texas comes in with the ninth most prolific passing attack in the country, 307 passing yards per game, but only sixth in the conference, 146 rushing yards per game. They wanted to get that ratio a little more even this week. So far, so good. Brown for Steve Bradley. Flag is thrown. Had a motion in the backfield. I assume that's what they called. If they didn't, they just missed it because they had two backs moving before the snap of the ball. Well, the flag didn't come till the tackle by Moore and Evans. Well, they could have missed the motion. Nope, they got it. Five more. Be marked off against the Longhorns. Texas has a lot of nicknames for all their players, and for number 89, Steve Bradley, he's got an interesting name. They call him Quadzilla. I'm not sure what that refers to, but uh, that's his nickname. Big Quads? Big Quadzilla. All I can guess. <laughs> they normally have not thrown to the tight end as much as they have today and last week, but one big difference that Niagara points out between James Brown and his predecessor Shane Lorenz is the willingness to go underneath and find the tight end. Lorenz always likes to get beat. This is Clayton. Jeffrey Clayton, a junior college All-American out of Mission Viejo, California. Brought down by Ken Neal across the 45. The bigger Texas line is now beginning to uh, make some difference on the uh, smaller SMU linemen. You can see the gigantic hole. You get excellent running backs running with that much room, and they're going to make a lot of yardage. Clayton does his job, setting up second, and it leaves him to four needed. Motion by Davis. Clayton again, and maybe no game, maybe a couple of feet. Wade Smith reacting very quickly along with... Eric Tomlin. Wade Smith that ran underneath the block, Dave. Uh, he saw the play opening up. Neal pulled again, and uh, Smith just turned and ran inside underneath the block. And as usual, a very undersized SMU defense playing uh, ends that weigh 240 and 260. Linebackers in the 200-pound range. They've got to be quick and react well. Ricky Williams. Dragging the pile, maybe for the first down to midfield, right where he needed to get for the first. Williams not only fast, but big. Six feet, 215 pounds. A baseball football dual star in San Diego. And in fact, is already in the Philadelphia Phillies organization. Played with their rookie team last summer, outfielder third baseman. He says, given a choice, his goals are in football. He considers himself a football player who also plays baseball. It's in his family. He's the second cousin of Cecil Fielder of the Detroit Tigers. And he does have a Texas first down. So those uh, Orange Bloods who may worry that he might not fulfill his uh, football career in Texas, apparently nothing to worry about. He much prefers this sport. Second quarter, seven-minute mark. Texas looks to add to a 14-0 lead. Brown looking deep. Interception number two by Cornell Parker. This one like the last one intended, but underthrown for Mike Adams. An 18-yard run back to midfield for Parker.
James Brown, who led the uh, nation last year in efficiency passing, hasn't actually thrown enough this year. On this particular play, Parker did a great job in slow playing the wide receiver as he broke across the field. Adams comes all the way across the field. Parker just slow played him. The ball was underthrown. He picks it up and makes an excellent return. Again, too much time to throw the ball, but it worked into the hands of SMU this time. Parker's second pick today, the entire defense had one interception of their first four games combined. So turning around, the turnover ratio, swing pass, and big yardage to the 35 for Chris Campbell. And an SMU first down on a 15-yard gainer. A third Jarvis Van Dyke field goal in Waco. 9-0 Baylor in the third. Well, we, we didn't expect them to shut out NC State last week. Almost unthinkable that they would do it to Tech this week. Well, Texas Tech has a much better offense than uh, NC State does overall. And so that's, uh, that's big uh, going through three quarters uh, with the shutout. James in the general area of Adams. James just uh, basically trying to get rid of that one. Another important thing about the ninth point that uh, Baylor just scored is that uh, that protects uh, that uh, six points they had where a touchdown and an extra point could win the game. In a close defensive battle, three field goals feel pretty good. Numbers for James so far this afternoon, four of seven. Dealing with a lot of pressure, unlike James Brown. And again, under some duress and incomplete, overthrown intended for 85, Lamont Guillory. Third and ten coming. SMU needs to take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, Interception sets them up uh, on the 50-yard line. They had a big first down. Now they need to continue maintaining possession of the ball and get some points uh, before the half. That'll keep them in this game. They fail, fail to score here. Uh, it'll be really detrimental to them in the second half. Fumble snap. James finds James Whitmore wide open. First down, SMU. A terrific effort by Chris James. Goes oh, for 11 yards. Well-designed play. Almost breaks down on this fumble by James. But a nice hop right back in his hand. Yep, bounced right to him, which was good. He alertly picks it up, throws it out to James Whitmore, number 80. He was the preseason all Southwest Conference pick this year. He is highly respected among Southwest Conference teams. So just the third first down of the half and the first third down conversion by SMU. Another rolling pocket, open, and incomplete intended for Cooper. Well-timed coverage by Trey Thomas. Uh, Cooper over there, single coverage. James with a difficult pass on the run. I think your description is very apt in the sense that uh, a little bit uh, timing one way or the other, and that would have been interference. All junior Texas secondary recruited together. They've played their entire careers together. Westbrook, Thomas Carter, and Allen. And he faces Joe Ellis at the corner, second and ten. Womack held fairly well in check in this second quarter. They hit by Tyson King to bring up third and long. Ninth carry for Dante Womack, 32 yards. Rossley debuted Womack in their victory last year against New Mexico. 13 carries and 129 yards against the Lobos, and then Womack hit by nagging ankle injury and was not that effective the rest of his freshman year. I think that injury and the fact that uh, he has played on a team that struggled uh, takes away some recognition that he might have uh, otherwise. He is a very, very good football player. James intended along the near side for Kelsey Adams. Good coverage by Carter. It'll be fourth down. A 
And from 42 yards out. Field goal try coming from Ben Crossland, the senior from Highland Park. He does have a stiff wind at his back, so that could uh, help. He's got a little bit of an off angle, but the moving of the hash marks inside in the college game two years ago has really helped on this type of uh, kick from this distance. All of 41 yards. And he has all the distance he needs, but it never hooked for him. It stays wide left. That's where you want it for a left-footed kicker on that Left hash mark, it doesn't go for Crossland, and it's still 14-0 back after this from Whataburger, celebrating 81 years of Southwest Conference football. 14-0, Texas over SMU. Dave Barnett and Grant Taft from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Grant and I announced the Dodge player of the game at the conclusion of our telecast today. That's a ways off, midway second quarter. Opening weekend of the State Fair, and a good day for sunbathing and football in the bowl. First time it's the home field for SMU since 1978. Fumbled by Mitchell is recovered back at the 20-yard line by a hustling Dan Neal. Hit by Craig Swan forcing the fumble. Dan Neal not only strong, but a quick reaction. It's a good hit by Swan. Ball squirts out. Neal is uh, Johnny on the spot and makes a recovery. Errors last week spelled a 55-27 defeat at Notre Dame. They had some errors today, but they lead 14 to nothing. Ground. Difficult pass. He tried to throw back against his momentum for Bradley, and a dangerous pass, too, because Bradley wasn't open. One of the hardest things that you uh, can do as a quarterback is uh, sprint to your right and throw back to the left. You're throwing across the body. You have uh, really nothing on it except your arm. And you can see how it dropped off at the end. And it also dropped, almost dropped into the arms of uh, SMU. Does the fact that he's willing to throw that pass indicate to you that he's confident in his arm, that it's not hurting him? Really does, Dave. Uh, he, he would not attempt that because that's all arm. On third and 12, Adams can't bring it in. Slightly behind him. Four Mustang defenders keeping Mike Adams company. They saw quite enough of him on their first drive today. Well, it's hard to say enough for uh, Texas offensive line in the time that they have given James to throw the ball. This ball is just behind. It's a hard catch. He could have made that catch, but but that is a difficult catch. When, it's, when you have to do a 360 as a receiver, it's well behind you. Adams had three grabs for 45 yards on the opening drive and nothing since then. He's tried to hit him twice. Parker has two interceptions on those occasions. And this kick by Schultes, very short. Out of bounds after 28 yards at the Texas 49. We're underway in Lincoln. Number two, Nebraska and Washington State. That thing comes in handy. That's a new uh, invention that's come out in the last couple of years. It's a uh, a mist, a cold water mist uh, that is uh, blown by, of course, the propellers in the uh, little uh, device there, but it really makes a nice, cool atmosphere on the sideline. You're telling me they did not have that at Snyder High School in your... No, nor did they have it at Baylor. Womack salvages a huge run out of what almost was lost yardage. Allen chasing down Womack at the 21. He goes 28 yards, and he did it all by his lonesome. He is a difference maker in the SMU attack with this kind of speed. Dante Womack is the uh, fastest man on the SMU team with a 4.4. He is also the leading rusher last year behind Flanagan kid that's involved in a lot of things on campus. His dad is a player that played, played at Prairie View A&M, and they'll be playing Grambling here tonight in this same stadium. Well, I counted three missed tackles. That figured in two. James going deep, and some contact will be called here. Cooper may get a push off here. 
Trey Thomas applauding. Rafiq Cooper appeared to push off at the one-yard line for offensive pass interference. Rafiq Cooper uh, stepping in the offensive position and did get a penalty. I think uh, you'll be able to see it very clearly here as he is down in the right-hand corner, getting close for a position that he wants to be, but he pushes off with his right arm and uh, tries to get to the ball, but that is a penalty. And you know what? It's not a bad decision on his part because that ball is floating up there for Thomas to pick off. Washington State, an early lead in Lincoln. Ruffy Cooper played only one year of high school football. He was a basketball star at Houston Northbrook for four years and ran track for three years. He showed pretty good football Go instincts that time to take the penalty. Come on, let's go, let's go. Costly, though, first and 25 from the 36 of Texas. James Chase. And that will not be intentional grounding. Reasonably close to Albert Johnson is the ruling as Jason Reeves was bearing down on James. Let's just say it was in the neighborhood. Wasn't real close, but it was in the neighborhood. Ten yards either way. Second down. SMU's offense held with... The shutout in progress today to one touchdown so far in the last 13 plus, almost 14 quarters. Only one touchdown. The lowest scoring team in Division 1A coming in. Just over seven per game. Nice catch and cut by Kevin Cornell. Haji Allen finally the stop at the 16. That's 21 of what they needed. And the drive still alive on third down now. I like what Kevin Thornall does with the football here. Watch him as he makes his first cut. Now as he gets in traffic, watch him put both arms around that ball. That's smart football, and it's taking care of the football. Kevin uh, had uh, last year a knee sprain that kept him out most of the season, but he's been a good player for SMU. Shotgun third and five. Oh, he had Whitmore open. No worse than first and goal if the pass is on target. It wasn't on target. They'll have to settle. They hope for three. That is frustrating. Good call. Good route. Open receiver, and they get nothing. So Crossland with a tougher angle now. Will attempt a 34-yarder from the far hash mark. There it is. One touchdown and 13 going on 14 quarters for the Mustang. Grossland ends the shutout. Right through from 34. And finally, a chance for Peruna to do its thing. I hate to call it in. I, I'm not sure him or her. How come, how come Peruna? Well, how come Peruna gets to be on the grass and poor Bebo's down there on the hot concrete? Home field advantage. <laughs> it's in effect for the. For the mascot as well as the, uh, the, the humans. When Bruna taking full advantage of the natural turf. We are close to halftime and coming up. We will have an interview that uh, the Grant enjoyed yesterday with Eddie Robinson, the legendary head coach of Grambling. As Grant said, Grambling Curry reviews the second half of the Cotton Bowl doubleheader tonight. We'll have our Texas Lottery highlights and both fans entertaining during the Cotton Bowl coming up. Eddie Robinson, 76, is he? 76 years old? 76 years old, coached at uh, Grambling for 54 years. Uh, we'll soon get his 400th victory and that, of course, is an all-time record. One of the great men and great coaches of all time. 
Well, unless Prairie View avoids its own record for consecutive defeats tonight, he will get his 399th career win, and next week can go for 400. Passed up Bear Bryant about a decade ago. Low driving kick by Coughlin. Through the end zone. Does his job in that he kept it unreturnable for Mike Adams. And that was a smart move on Mike Adams' part to let that ball go on into the end zone and not take it on the one or two yard line. Texas with plenty of time, 2.46 to go. Two of their timeouts into the fourth quarter now at Lloyd Casey Stadium. Still nine to nothing. Alabama still shutting out Georgia in the fourth. Mitchell and Williams is split behind James Brown. This is Williams. Nothing doing. At all, SMU reads it well. The linebackers plugging the gap. Headed by Smith and Eric Tomlin. That was SMU's best defensive play as a team uh, the entire day. Uh, they moved uh, aggressively to the point of attack and uh, stopped them for no gain. If they can continue to do that and find some way to get some points, they have gone through 14 quarters now and they are averaging just a hair over one point per quarter. And that, uh, that is not enough to beat anybody. And that's a concern that SMU had coming into this game. Well, this is Dominic Bustamante, senior from Corpus Christi, who Makovic says is finally coming on. They've had to uh, move him from the defensive to the offensive line, kind of waited for him to develop. And it's finally happening for him this year. So if uh, this injury cost him any time at all, be a shame for Bustamante. He was hurt uh, against Pittsburgh, uh, but was able to come back uh, after about two or three days and begin to work out for this game. No slow moving there for Bustamante. You can see he has a brace already on his right knee and very gingerly testing what would appear maybe to be a re-injury of the knee. That's not good news for Coach Makovic and his offensive staff. But it is good news that he's at least walking. He's not uh, even limping all that much. His replacement is a redshirt freshman, Octavius Bishop, from Westfield High School at Houston. They're about the same size, but uh, don't have uh, near the same experience. Octavius, 6'5", about 308. Bishop was one of their best recruiting catches on the line of the last several years. Jeffrey Clayton into the backfield. On second and ten, Brown the short drop. The catch by Clayton and the immediate hit by Wade Smith at the 23. Two yards, if that. Pony defense, Grant, getting fired up and enjoying the fact they're still in this game. That'd be a lot worse than 14-3. That's the two best consecutive plays they've had the entire first two quarters. Stop the run, stop the pass. Now if they can get some pressure on the quarterback, otherwise this third down situation is trouble for them. They've got to put pressure right now on the quarterback. And Parker has stopped Adams ever since the first quarter. It'll be an Adams situation here, third and eight. Brown rolling away from him and finds the tight end, Bradley. For the first down, Bradley carries the pile forward to the 47, a 24-yard gain. And Texas will use its second timeout. That was all James Brown. He did have a little pressure. He escapes, picks out the open receiver. That was not a part of a design route. He picks him out, throws the ball to him. Uh, certainly a good catch, and I thought a good run as well. Picked up about four or five extra yards on the tail end of the completion of the pass. Well, there are the obvious, almost cliched comparisons uh, between James Brown and Donnie Little, but James Brown says when people tried to tell him, don't go to Texas, they won't let you uh, develop as a quarterback there, it almost 
added to his uh, insistence on going to Texas. Uh, he says, you know, they booed Donnie Little, the first black quarterback in Austin, but he says, hey, they booed Peter Gardere, they booed Shea Morenz. What, what Texas quarterback hasn't been booed? So he, he looks at it a little differently and, uh, and says, if I perform, I'm in the right place for me. Obviously, he has uh, developed. You know, it's interesting, Dave, the, the great athletes that you recruit, uh, you're helped in recruiting them if others come in and try to tell them that they can't play at your place for one reason or the other. That happened when we recruited Cody Carlson and Tom Mickey at the same time. They were told they couldn't play at the same time. Adams gets open by slipping underneath the coverage. And he slips all the way to the Pony 35, dragged down by Ken Neal, 18 yards. First catch by Adams since the first quarter. They have to hide him underneath the coverage to get him the ball. This is just an underneath screen. Adams takes a drive step to the outside, comes underneath the flat coverage. Ball is thrown perfectly to him. Those things can break for a touchdown because you've got flow going one way and the ball coming another. Here's a nice catch by Justin McLemore, his first of the day. McLemore had a difficult week last week. Dropped one wide open at the 40 of Notre Dame, and that was still a game. This time he makes a nice reaching grab. Whistles and flags with 48 seconds showing in the first half. Bustamante is uh, being uh, carried up uh, the ramp uh, to have that knee checked out at halftime. And another illegal procedure mark off coming against Texas. And McAvick has to go deeper into his uh, offensive line too deep. They've been relatively healthy, unlike his defensive line. Tony Brackens is one of the better players I've seen in this league, and uh, it has been a big loss for the University of Texas defense, not only because of his athletic skill, but he's a real leader for Texas. Brackens, the fine defensive end, again being held out this week. Brown, wide open. McLemore out of bounds to stop the clock at the 30, 36 seconds. And third and five coming. The sixth-year senior from Waxahachie. Unusual situation. He was injured uh, last year, and uh, Texas appealed to the NCAA and got him his big uh, uh, sixth year and uh, justly deserved. He had a severe knee injury, and he's rehabbed and come back, and it's good to see him uh, making some catches and playing the game that he loves. Went home and worked as a private investigator while he was sitting out from football last year. Quick snap. Clayton. They didn't expect to run, and Clayton rambles to the 21. That'll stop the clock at 30 seconds. Jeffrey Clayton, a junior college All-American at Orange Coast JC in California. They brought in a haul of running backs this year. Mitchell also from junior college. And Williams. Brown to the end zone, almost intercepted, intended for Bradley. Seth Stinton had his hands on it. Incomplete pass, stops the clock with 20 seconds to go. They're, uh, of course, using a no huddle. They'll probably get in at least two plays and uh, then try to kick a field goal. Brown again throwing the ball into coverage which has resulted in so many of his interceptions this year. He has now thrown seven. That was almost number eight. Clayton, led by Bishop, cuts back to the 11. He'll be very close for a first down. Clock stops at 13 seconds for a possible measurement. And Great cut right here. Wrap the ball up. Very important. Number 28, Seth Senton. Stanton has uh, been an outstanding player all day. I've seen him in on the play time and time again, and he's just a sophomore. Texas has used its final timeout, 13 seconds. It is a first down. It is not quite goal to goal at the 11-yard line. So with 13 seconds, at least a couple of shots into the end zone. Yeah, they'll throw the ball, and that way uh, make sure that they don't throw an interception, keep possession of the ball. If they can get the touchdown, fine. If not, they'll stop the clock with the incompleted pass and kick it field goal.
Well, we were drawing some comparisons between Brown and some quarterbacks of the recent past in Texas. Where he doesn't compare with anybody is the ability to run and throw. They had some decent passers, some who were better running the ball, but he combines them both. He's as good a running quarterback, I think, as I've seen in several years in the league. Now, SMU, having seen the alignment, calls its second timeout. What they do with that, they'll let uh, Texas come to the line of scrimmage and let the coaches in the press box take a look at uh, their alignment and call a timeout and then come back and try to make an adjustment based on what they think the play will be off of a pre-described formation. It's called uh, chess. A lot more exciting than chess. <laughs> yeah. Tom Rossley has uh, scrambled his uh, assistant football coaching staff with some additions and some job changes. New defensive coordinator this year, David Kanaus, who has been an assistant for Tom a long time, but has been promoted this year. Among the uh, recent additions, Jerry Gray is the new secondary coach for SMU, former All-American defensive back at Texas. Clovis Hale, uh, who's been a long-time uh, football coach at the University of Texas, Iowa, and now at uh, SMU, is a long-time friend of mine who played for me at uh, McMurray College. Wayne McGarrity in with Clayton in the backfield. Brown to the end zone, open in the corner, caught by McLemore for the touchdown. You know he didn't have a very comfortable week reliving what might have been at Notre Dame on that drive. Three catches, 21 yards, and his score. Reed Mack, as he's called lovingly by his uh, teammates down at uh, the University of Texas. Seven seconds to spare. Rawson out of the hold of Schultes. Three for three today. 21-3 Texas. Again, you see plenty of time by the uh, University of Texas line. This is an excellent pass thrown perfectly to the spot. Leaping catch, feet down in the end zone, picture play. Justin came in with five catches on the year. Three on that drive alone. Texas now in the type of command they expected to be in today. It, it took that drive and particularly that catch to get them there, but they're now in position to think about a blowout and resting some people in the second half. SMU really needed to keep that score off the scoreboard. Uh, going in at the half 14 to 3 is a great deal different than going in 21 to 3. They had some momentum. They were playing better defense. They got points on the board. Uh, it is a real important time to, uh, for SMU to try to get something going psychologically. Physically, they're going to have problems in the second half because Texas is stronger and Texas is better. Sean Mitchell getting an early trip up the famous Cotton Bowl ramp to the locker room. Not sure whether it's because he's shaken up or he just wants to beat the pack which will be right behind it with only seven seconds to go it may be that this return if it is a return will end the half Jimmy Moore is back deep along with Rafiq Cooper Dawson will try to go without a holder little dribbler tough to handle and just able to pick it up at the 32-yard line is Chris Campbell. Three seconds remaining. One crack at it for the SMU offense. Clock doesn't start running until uh, a person on the receiving team touches the ball, so it bounced around. You'd think seven seconds were gone, but there's actually three seconds left. Brown to back aboard. James Brown's second touchdown pass today. That gives him... Now a total of nine on the year to go with seven interceptions. Chris James 
in this first half. Six of 14, 61 yards. Three of the completions to Dante Womack, who was also carried 10 times for 60 yards. Well, not looking like they're going to sit up on the last gasp of the first half. Aikens had a hold of James around the legs. The pass harmlessly floats to the grass, and that ends the first half on an appropriate note by Chris Aikens. 21 to 3, Texas over SMU. Today, South. Tom Rossley and the SMU Mustangs in a familiar position, down big 18 points. Simple game plan, half. Dave, for the second half. We've got uh, SMU having to find a way to score. They've scored an average of one point for the last uh, 14 quarters. They've got to score. Texas, on the other hand, I just say they've got to continue to dominate and then rotate. Dominate their uh, opponents, the uh, SMU Mustangs, and then rotate their players in off that bench and get everybody into play. Second half game plans brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Crossland's kick to Adams from the two. A couple of broken tackles, a 20-yard return for Mike Adams out to the 22-yard line where a flag is on the grass. Texas victimized by some untimely penalties throughout the first half with this one will go against SMU. And the first half statistics, Texas 147 rushing yards to 51 for SMU, 56 of that from Sean Mitchell on 10 carries. 19 first downs, only four for SMU, total yardage 319 to 112, but the six penalties kept the score down. Texas could easily have had uh, 28, maybe even 35 points by half point. That's exactly right. Uh, Texas, again, made too many mistakes that the coaches aren't going to be happy with, but they do lead uh, 21 to 3. Penalties and James Brown's two interceptions, both picked off by Cornell Parker. A 600 plus total yardage pace today. They came in 22nd nationally and first in the league at 453 total yards per game. Brown off play action, hanging this one up for Mike Adams. Number three for Cornell Parker. Dan Neal and Steve Bradley. Tackle Cornell Parker after a 27-yard return of his third interception today. Absolutely an outstanding play by Cornell Parker, who reads this all the way, then makes the lunge right at the last second, takes the ball, and then turns up field with a very good uh, bit of field, open field running, and Brown is sick. That's his third interception today. And all to the same guy. All intended for Adams. Underthrown. Picked by Parker. Every single one. Womack. Whoa, what a hit by Chris Carter. We welcome one of the uh, gentlemen honored in the first half. The team of the 80s for SMU reassembled here. What would it be without Eric Dickerson? Good to have you up here. Thank you. Is this a, a nice weekend getting together with your old buddies? Oh, yeah. I haven't seen a lot of those guys in some time. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen last night since 1982, the Cotton Bowl game. You waved goodbye after the win over <laughs> Pittsburgh, and that's been it. I haven't seen since. <laughs> it is uh, second and five for us in you. Womack. Robert Reed makes the tackle about a yard shot. You're still in Los Angeles? Yes, I'm still in Los Angeles. What's occupying your time? I have, a, I have a publishing company in Los Angeles and also a, a company to make hats and T-shirts. How much do you miss... Uh, the college level of football. You, now, you the college level, I, I really miss the college level. Really, not I so didn't. much the pro level. No, not so much the pro. The college level was fun. It was for the fun. And I have a lot of fun memories from college. Some from pros also, but the college I really miss. I'd rather watch college than pro. Eric, when we came in and uh, rode the elevator up, there was a great picture of you down there when you were a Kodak All-American. <laughs> and then when they showed a shot of you on the sideline a while ago, my comment was, <laughs> Boy, Eric had more hair back in those days. <laughs> yeah, I had a head full of hair, then I have none, no hair. Now, I looked at it, I said, wow, I had to cherish that picture. <laughs> Boy, you, you did have some hair, though. Oh, I had a bunch of hair. <laughs> I think I had too much. That's probably why I don't have any now. 
Eric, I tell you what, you were one of the great players of all time in this league, and uh, uh, it was a pleasure to watch you, not a pleasure to coach against you because <laughs> you wear us out, but it was a pleasure to watch your thank great you. ability on the field. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uncle Womack doing his best there at Dickerson. Nine or ten yards. This is not following the script of the second half for the University of Texas. The game plan would have been to come out and dominate early, get more points on the board, and then try to play some uh, younger players. But uh, SMU has turned this around with the interception, and now they're moving the ball. Eric, you had uh, games against Texas that are still, I guess, among the most memorable that SMU's ever played. In particular, the one that stands out, I guess, is 82. Most definitely. <laughs> it's 10-10 late, and then the... You get a crazy bounce Pass. off of a defender from Texas. Bobby Leach takes it in for a touchdown. And that, that turned the whole game around. You don't understand. That game was so big because we had talked so much in the paper. Both teams, we didn't like each other at all. There was no secret. National title uh, alluded to you guys that year, but you were the only undefeated team in college. Does that still kind of leave a bitter taste that you didn't get number one? Very much. Uh, I, I talked to guys that played on the, the team at the Penn State, and I call them the cheaters, <laughs> the Penn State cheaters, uh, that have our national championship, and I always tell those guys, you have my ring, and I want it. They haven't handed it over yet. They'll never hand it over. <laughs> well, that, uh, among all the, the great memories, I guess, is, is right up there. Is there any one that is your top of your four years here? Uh, I think my, my biggest day and my fondest memory probably came against Texas A&M um, in Texas Stadium when I had uh, 14 for 200 yards. That was, that was one of my biggest days. Had it down by Akins. I guess that would stand out. Yeah, that, that, that really stands out in my mind. I had a big day. It's great to see you. Enjoy the rest of uh, your reunion. Thanks for spending thank some you, thank time. Thank you very much. With us. Okay. Eric Dickerson. As good a running back as you'll ever see on any level in anybody's book. A couple of great plays uh, while we were visiting with Eric. Uh, Jason Reeves uh, made a great hit from his weak linebacker position. Third and nine. Through the hands of Kevin Cornell. Trey Thomas right on and might have prevented a first down anyway, but it'll be fourth and nine. Crossland will come on. This should be in the neighborhood of 45 yards. Well, with the wind of their back, uh, this is an understandable decision, trying to get more points on the board with their lack of scoring in the last uh, four ball games. Uh, this is probably a pretty good decision. If the wind were the other way, I think they would go for it here, try to get that uh, first down, and if they didn't keep Texas backed up. Big snap and hold. It is going to be way wide up. Then Crossland not taking advantage of the big wind at his back. Now one for three, and it remains 21 to three. Favor of Texas, early going of the third quarter. <laughs> Berger remembers flashback. He was just up here with us. Eric Dickerson, the other half of the most prolific running tandem in conference history and in college history, Eric Dickerson, in the Mustang Mania days of the late 70s, early 80s, his last two teams went a collective 21, 1, and 1. He finishes the year seven yards ahead of Earl Campbell as the all-time leading conference rusher since the past. Sean Mitchell breaks through the initial wall and uh, maybe a touchdown preventing tackle is applied by Dewey Evans at the 40. Mitchell settles for 14 yards. And that is Richard Walton, who is with a lot of time to go in the third quarter, already playing quarterback for Texas. James Brown, for at least this series, is out. And you see Walton's numbers coming in. He is a redshirt freshman from Bay City. Brown, after throwing his third interception of the day, all to Cornell Parker. Watching Walton get some time. Mitchell. Parker does a masterful job, Grant, fighting off Matt Davis's block and making his play. I'll tell you exactly, I believe, what Coach uh, Makovic is thinking. James Brown, you've seen him on three occasions throw the ball short. 
that uh, is an indication that his shoulder is bothering him some. And I think that Coach Makovic has uh, just pulled him out of there to give some rest to that shoulder. They've got a 21 to 3 lead. Try to get the ball down with uh, this quarterback and give James some rest. Mitchell. Look at him weave his way right and left and right again. First down, Texas. Mustang 43, tackled by Ken Neal, 10 more yards. Uh, watch uh, number 81, Pat Fitzgerald here. He's a pass-catching dude, but he's also an excellent blocker. He was the one that cleared the last seven-yard run. Pat Fitzgerald caught three touchdown passes last week against uh, Notre Dame. Unusual to have two tight ends as uh, Texas does that can both block and catch, and Bradley has a touchdown this year. Fitzgerald has four. He said three of those last week. Play action for Walton. Almost the Mustangs. Fourth interception in Tex one is just six, and that one got through his hand. Parker's three, by the way, is not a school record. John Hughes and 62 West Hopkins and 81 both had four in one game. Not a lot on this ball. Fell short. Oh, he's going to be so upset. When he looks at this film, it was right in his hands. Linebackers just don't get that many opportunities. Uh, he may never get one that good. Second and ten. And he's come with a blitz. It's picked up in traffic. And that one, a near interception. For both Dewey Evans and Ken Neal, they were both in the neighborhood intended for Quentin Wallace. Dewey Evans is a backup that uh, is a redshirt freshman who's had very little experience, been forced into uh, playing time this year because of injuries. Texas, a good percentage of converting third downs today, six of nine with 50 percent coming in for the year. Ricky Williams behind Neal. Only reaching the 38. Seth Stinton coming up from safety. And Richard Walton's first drive of the day. Boggs down there. Just inside the 40. And Mark Schultes is on the kick. Well, we just had Eric Dickerson up. Vaughn Dickerson. They've got Dickerson James reestablished here at SNU. Chris James and Vaughn Dickerson, neither one, of course, uh, related to the originals. Vaughn, a sophomore from Houston Yates, standing at the 10-yard line. Schultes hangs this one up. And it may have bounced off Evans. It's out of bounds. No harm done, but a beautiful job of angling by Schultes. It goes 32 yards, and it... Pins the Mustangs at their six-yard line. 9.41 to go, third quarter. Big Naomi. I guess SMU's answer to Big Bertha. Not sure what happened to Big Bertha. You don't see the big UT bass drum anymore. Went the way of... Uh of other uh, icons, I guess. With the way of allowing Bebo on the grass. That's a new with uh, some good and some not so good outings so far this year. And this one, at this point, would fall into the latter category. This carried by Brian Harmon, a sophomore from Paris. The word on Dominic Bustamante, who left the field late in the first half, he re-injured the knee that was already braced, his right knee, and will not return to this game. No word as to whether he'll be ready for Rice next week. Oklahoma in this stadium in two weeks for Texas. So chance for them to get used to the surroundings here in the State Fair and the Cotton Bowl. Dante Womack spinning away from the initial hit. First down, SMU near the 30. He is going to have good, maybe great numbers when this thing's all over. That's now 15 carries, 92 yards for him. That's a great effort by Dante Wama. Kyle Richardson, number 59, uh, moves in to make the final stop. But uh, just tremendous effort by uh, Wama. 
speed and you also saw the balance there as he nears 100 yards. That for an SMU team that barely managed 100 total in the first half. Harmon juggles and drops the swing pass. Those plays have been called at good times because uh, in most cases the fence has just not flown, uh, flowed out to that flank and whoever's been out there has been wide open. Dave, SMU has really uh, done a good job with their plan coming in. They were up against some pretty great odds as far as Texas defense is concerned, but they wanted to get two backs in the backfield, run the ball with Womack, and then, of course, throw the ball out into the flats. And uh, you're not going to make a lot of uh, yardage when you do that, but you can move the chain. Womack threw a nice big hole. We're about six. Carter on the tackle along with Shane Rink. And Tyson King, third down coming. With eight and a half to go, third quarter. And SMU now coming up on uh, 15 quarters since dotting the uh, the end zone. One touchdown in 14 and a half quarters, or thereabouts. Only six trips all year inside the opponent's red zone. 20 yard line. Kicks to and Dante should have another SMU first down. He will up to the 40-yard line. Whole different picture, Grant, if you have Womack and Flanagan both to consider. And, and with Ramon Flanagan out, all bets are off for SMU. This year. Well, it makes all the difference in the world because uh, Flanagan has the ability to uh, do what James Brown can do. He can throw the ball very well, but he can put pressure on a defense that you can't get by a straight drop back quarterback or a stiff legged quarterback. So it would have been a big difference for them this year. This is a fine running back warm up. Chris Campbell in along with Kelsey Adams to get down to a breather and look at the reaction by the biggest man on the field, Stoney Clark. Moving pretty good for that 320 pounds. Well, Womack's a good runner, no question about it, but uh, he's not strong enough to carry uh, Stoney Clark on his back at uh, 320 pounds. Kelsey Adams on that uh, carry. Stoney Clark, a competitive poet. He actually reads poetry, his own poetry, in competitions. This game is just about over in Waco. Five seconds to go. Nine seven. Tech finally scored, but they trail with five seconds left. Here at second and fourteen, flags fly. They took too much time. It will be delay of game minus five for SMU. Virginia awaiting Texas later on this year. Down in Austin, Michigan 31-19, closer than most people figured. Upset in the making in Columbia, South Carolina, over 14th rated LSU. You know, ever since a couple of weeks ago when all the uh, talk shows and columns and everybody was uh, raising the issue of running up the score, nobody's running up the score. Rice is, though, 21-7. Now they trail that one really 7 to nothing. They had that weekend of 60s and 70s all throughout the top 10, and, and since then, Florida State had a moderate margin of victory over Central Florida. Nebraska, likewise, over Pacific, and, and no gargantuan margin so far today. Well, that uh, was a lot of fall to raw about not too much, to tell you the truth. Uh, it happened to be one of those couple of weekends where some really strong teams were playing teams that uh, were out of their league. Uh, a lot of scores took place. This is a nice play here. Albert Johnson, a freshman from Missouri City, almost for what they needed for the first down. 19 of the 20 yards off the play action fake to Womack. I hope you can see the block of Keith Childs, number 61, and Rodney Townsend, number 53. They were the keys to uh, opening this up. And then this is an excellent run. There's some fireworks still left in this SMU team. Albert Johnson, whose father, Albert, played with Tom Rossley at the University of Cincinnati and early defensive back through most of the 70s. Batted away at almost an interception. 
Robert Reed with the knockdown. Robert Reed grew up uh, wanting to go to Texas A&M and ended up at the University of Texas. Uh, he's a youngster that uh, received the CFA award last year for good works and good effort. But this is uh, an award that uh, he'll receive from his coaches for good effort and good works on the football field and batting down the pass. Yeah, isn't that strange? His mom was an a &M business professor for six years, grew up wanting to be an actor. How did he end up in you know, Strange things happen. Anthony Scotty's punt. Drives Adams back and he can't hang on. At the three yard line, it's an SMU recovery. Mike Adams muffing the punt by Scotty. Donald Mitchell with the recovery for SMU. Special teams and uh, turnovers. Here they combine to give SMU the ball on the three-yard line. Donald Mitchell was supposed to start at corner till he hurt his ankle Thursday, but he makes the biggest contribution of the afternoon so far. Setting up SMU first and goal, looking for their first touchdown and better than two games. Shut out at Wisconsin last week, 42-0. Their first shutout since 91 here in this stadium against Texas, 34 nothing. James runs right into Robert Reed and never gets a chance to even think about an option pitch and then gets a difference of opinion going with Reed. James thought Reed threw him down after the whistle, but no flat. Quick inside move by Robert Reed eliminated the opportunity to pitch the ball. They were trying to uh, get an option play out of it. That turnover total is not going to make John McAvitt very happy this week. They have Rice followed by Oklahoma. SMU, as you saw, minus 11 for the year. Takeaway giveaway ratio. Three interceptions and that much fun. Marring the Texas effort. Womack with a kick. Womack loses yardage. Jason Reed drives him out back at the six-yard line. It's over in Waco. Baylor has defeated number 24, Texas Tech, 9-7. to seven. Picture, picture perfect pursuit. Uh, Kyle Richardson, number 55. Jason Reeves, 88. Flowing to the football, keeping their feet, driving to the point of attack. That's uh, what defensive pursuit's all about. So that group rising to the challenge before him. First and goal. At the three, turns into third and goal at the six. Cornell, Whitmore, and Johnson all come wide right. DeAndre Robinson wide left. Shovel, Womack, touchdown. Dante Womack. Second touchdown this year for Womack. First touchdown in two games for SMU. It comes with 5-12 to go in the third quarter. Cross them to make it an 11-point game with the extra point. Good, but just barely. Simulated sprint out. Pitching the ball underneath to Womack and uh, gets it into the end zone. That's an unusual short yardage goal line play, but uh, in this case it worked. One of the reasons was that Texas pursuit had been getting hard outside, so they came back underneath that pursuit. Perfectly timed, too. Rink is just about on James when he gets the shovel pass off. Nice play calling on that entire drive, even before the punt. It's 21-10. It took a fumble by Mike Adams on a punt, but at last, SMU remembers what it feels like to be in the end zone. And it's 21 to 10. It's no longer the blowout that it looked like it would be at halftime. Does John McAvick come back after this scoring drive with James Brown? 
We'll find out. He gave Richard Walton one series. After Brown had thrown his third interception to Cornell Parker. Dante Womack getting a breather. Brown never took his helmet off. He's been throwing throughout this break. And it doesn't look like he's out because of any uh, particular arm problem. I think uh, John Makovic was resting him. Uh, you know, as I explained, uh, three interceptions and they've been underthrown. And uh, I think he just wanted to rest him and come back if he needs him in the game. And he does. He needs him to come in and move the team to a touchdown. Ryan White barely avoids another Texas disaster. And all that work on special teams this week is not producing the desired result. They almost have their second straight fumble on a kick. Ball bounces off the leg. Has to be picked up. It's a live ball. Get your hands on it and uh, wrap it up. That's all you're trying to do there. You're not trying to make yardage. You're trying to protect the football. First problem was they were too close. Well, he stepped in front of uh, Adam. And as you see, Brown remains on the Texas bench, and Richard Walton remains the quarterback. 503 of the third. John Mitchell. Mitchell needed one more block. That might have turned into 85 yards. Cornell Parker drives him out. This is a good run, but watch uh, John Elmore, number 66. Makes an excellent block. Breaks him free to the outside. One man, and he may turn it up the sideline. And if he does, now this young man has excellent speed. In fact, both Texas running backs are the fastest that uh, they've had in some time. This is going to have to be an official timeout because the chains never moved. It was uh, first down. The chains stayed right where they were. And they're going to measure just to make sure they had initially signaled first down. Now just to make sure here come uh, here comes the crew. Stay with us. Grant and I will announce the Dodge player of the game at the conclusion of our telecast. First down by a couple of links of the football. Wendell Washington has been playing for Jason Evans who had an operation. And now Washington has been replaced by Max Munn, number 64. I mean, it's like dominoes. Jason Evans had surgery yesterday. Jay Harvey had surgery yesterday. Troy Williams is uh, out for the season because of... His heart condition, which has brought it into his career. Mitchell threw two tackles near another first down. That probably should have been no gain. He broke through J uh, Jackson Moore's attempted tackle, and finally Ken Neal is able to wrap up Mitchell, who with that run cracks 100 yards. Well, on the ISO, we won't give probably much credit for the blocking. You have to give credit uh, for the run. Mitchell uh, breaks two tackles and almost breaks a third right here. John Mitchell's first 100-yard day as a Texas Longhorn. Grew up in Austin. Okay. Holds the Austin High School record, 2,076 yards as a senior at LBJ. Mitchell will take this one 64 yards. Officially, Sean Mitchell. Second touchdown as a Longhorn. He's come so close to breaking one like that, it almost was inevitable that one would finally turn into a long-distance sprint, and it's happened. And it's 27 to 10 with Dawson's extra point coming. Bill Dawson is four for four, but Sean Mitchell is the story of the afternoon for Texas. 
Sean Mitchell just takes a simple pitch out, comes to the right, good blocking, makes the cut back across the field, and just outruns everybody. Not any superb blocking downfield. It's all Sean Mitchell as he takes it into the end zone for 60-plus yards. Another shot of it. You can see the big area that he has to cut back in. The thing that you've got is you've got Texas linemen on their feet, Texas backs on their feet. Nobody's on the ground. They're moving the blocks, and when you do that, you expand the defense and create openings inside, and there's the place for the cutback. So he doesn't think it's in the bag yet. Boy, if anybody deserved a trip to the mister, Sean Mitchell does. John Makovic says he, he can't even put into words how nice it is to have that kind of speed on the offensive side of the ball. Well, it makes all the difference in the world. It's uh, You could see it right there. You could tell from up here that uh, once he broke across the field, he was gone all the way. There was two people in pursuit but no one was going to catch him. It ties Ricky Williams' 65-yarder against Hawaii as the longest run from scrimmage by Texas this year. It has been, and we drew this comparison in the first half, it's been since the Eric Metcalf days back in the 80s, and 88 was his last year in Austin, that the Horns have had that kind of speed in the backfield. And they've got it from both their starting running back positions. This, uh, third quarter now picks up on what they came into the game with University of Texas and that is to uh, be able to utilize their capacity to move the ball to score to uh, go ahead and beat a team that has not had the capability of scoring averaging one point uh, per quarter up until the uh, almost gift touchdown a moment ago when they got the ball on the three yard line SMU gets it in for seven points. Off an angle of this end it will be Parker from the six. And the Mustangs will start from the 27-yard line. Well, they erase Mike Adams' era. Here. Back to an 18-point margin where it was at halftime. Three minutes and 54 seconds to go in the third quarter. In this conference, with the speed that Baylor and A&M and Tech and the upper echelon have, Texas has got to counter it, and with Brown at quarterback and those two at running back, they finally can't. Yes. It'll be an interesting race. Baylor defeating Tech 9-7. James deep, too deep. Westbrook had textbook coverage of A.J. Johnson. Right, Westbrook, who missed about half the year last year. After tearing up a knee in the loss to Rice, that game now looms for the first time since the mid-60s as a revenge match for Texas. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And uh, Rice is winning against Army this week. Uh, Texas will be coming off a victory if they can hang on. Particularly uh, right now, this series, if their defense can shut down SMU, get the offense back on the field, they will have gained control back again of this game. Long Dickerson, number two, comes across in motion. On the delay, handoff. Dante Womack wrapped up. They had enough horns on him that he couldn't break that series of tackles. See if he gets off the bottom of the pile. Going to be Gray Mosier with the first contact. Gary Darnell starting to uh, sprinkle in some backups. Dusty Renfro, a true, fresh, true freshman linebacker, is in along with. Some other uh, second liners, White Kirkpatrick. Starting secondary remains on the field, however, on third down and 11. Akins and Clark have gone side by side most of the day. Texas forward wall. Heavy traffic. Almost caught by Johnson, almost intercepted off his deflection. SMU had plenty of time to throw the ball. 
good protection for the first time there. Double teaming uh, Stoney Clark in there, and that, uh, that helps on the protection. You single block that big guy, and he'll be in the quarterback's face. Well, it's Chris Carter who's back beat this time. Remember, Adams muffing the last punt attempt and sets up SMU's touchdown, so Adams gets a breather. Adams has to chase this one all the way across the field. A UT hop to the 39. Not much, 35 yards with the wind behind him. Next week, we will go down I-30 and... It'll be Houston at TCU from Eamon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, noon central time on next week's Raycom Southwest Conference Game of the Week. Hope you can join us soon. You know, TCU may uh, be a real factor in the race this season for the Southwest Conference. They came on strong at the end of the season last year, beat Texas Tech, and uh, they have uh, begun to play a little better uh, as the weeks have progressed in this young season. Your schedule sets them up for it should be the second straight goal game. They certainly expect to be. After reaching the incumbents a year ago. Walt remains the quarterback on target. Can't throw it any better to Justin McLemore for 14 yards and a first down. Now this is an important play. Drop back. He, he, he didn't have uh, perfect techniques on the throw, but his arm pulled the ball in uh, squarely where it needed to be. If you, if you watched, he, he spread his legs, drop step to the left instead of stepping toward the receiver, and usually the ball will drop in those uh, instances. Sean Mitchell nearing 200 yards on his 17th carry of the afternoon, now 178 yards and two touchdowns. 65-yarder followed by a nine-yard gain here on first down. Bring up second and one. Ahmad Hayes, the nose tackle on the stop. Mitchell appears to be the tight back. Grant, that gets better as the game goes on. That is a sign of a good back. The more carries they get, the uh, longer the game goes, the stronger they get. They just keep riding him. He was ridden down by Swan, but with enough balance to reach and apparently pick up the first down. Swan had him spun around, but he kept a sense of where the marker was. And he does have enough for the first. Important for SMU to get Craig Swan back this week, even with one day of practice. Had to sit him against Wisconsin, it really showed up. And you see the numbers for Mitchell today. Texas, as a team, came in averaging on the ground about 150, and Mitchell by himself. Now 179 yards. This is Wayne McGarrity, redshirt freshman out of San Antonio, and he backs his way inside the 25 and should have another first. Wayne McGarrity... Two serious knee injuries in his career, one in high school and one last year. Domination is what we said would be the key in the uh, second half, and the offensive line of Texas is now totally dominating the defensive line of SMU. And the offensive line has some backups sprinkled in as well. Bishop will replace the injured Bruce Devine. And Adams is in. Walton ready to go deep for Matt Davis. He has his second touchdown grab of the afternoon from 25 yards. from Richard Walton, who's going to remember that one for a long time. It's his first collegiate touchdown pass. Dawson, bit of a low effort. 
didn't get full contact, but good enough. 35 10. Dave Walton throws this ball absolutely perfect. Watch him step into it as opposed to a moment ago. Put that foot right to the ball uh, receiver, and uh, Matt picks it up. He's got to be a happy young man. Two touchdowns in one game. And you saw who he had to beat to get open in the corner, Parker, which even Adams has had some difficulty doing today. If you go back to a year ago at this time, Shea Morenz was the starter. He got hurt against Colorado. And the Texas coaches had really been more impressed by this man than James Brown in practice. Brown had the tag of being a terrible practice player, but because he had already had his redshirt year, they decided to go with him against Oklahoma. The rest is history. He beat Oklahoma in his first college start, 17-10, undefeated as a starter until last week. But until Brown got the chance, Walton had impressed the coaches more. Notice James Brown does have his helmet off on the sideline now. I think the pads can come next, and he, he may just go ahead and head back to Austin. He is done, it would appear, barring a huge comeback by SMU. He had some good moments. The three interceptions on I'm sure on him for a while this week, even in apparent victory. Well, I know that the uh, coaching staff for Texas has to feel good about the performance of Walton because as you go down the stretch in conference play, it is very, very important to have two quarterbacks that you can depend on. I dare say there won't be a controversy at quarterback because James Brown is an obviously great quarterback that's done a super job for Texas. But this is a good plus for them to have Walton perform so well. Short kick bounces off of Rafik Cooper. Rafik Cooper has this one, luckily, thrown over the sideline at the 15-yard line. Mitchell staying awful close to that miss. Temperature is supposed to be mid-80s. Luckily, it's not AstroTurf, so it's also mid-80s on, on the field. And he deserves... Probably the rest of his afternoon on 18 carries, 179 yards, two touchdowns. Among them, a 65 yard That's SMU new, a typically four field position. One near 15 yard line. Womack with a nice hole in about five yards, runs into the grass. Of Jason Reed, possibly the last play of the third quarter. They had a window of opportunity. They had a 21-10 game after Adams fumbled the punt. Texas has responded very well. Two consecutive touchdown drives. Looking at that, Jason Reeves, uh, number 88, uh, he's a fast guy, 4.5. But one of the amazing things to me is he has 5.5 body uh, fat percent. That's about what you have, Dave. Yeah, it's right in my neighborhood, give or take about 15, 20 percent. I don't close. think you run a 4.5. 30. <laughs> Not a 40. That is the end of the first, the uh, third quarter, and uh, a Texas blowout with 15 minutes to go. 35 to 10 Longhorns in the sunny Cotton Bowl. Fourth quarter in the Cotton Bowl. They brought out in Grant Taft, Texas. Blows from 21-10 to 35-10 on Sean Mitchell's long touchdown run. And Richard Walton's touchdown pass to Matt Davis to close out the third quarter. Third down and seven for the Ponies from their 18-yard line. LSU has come from behind to tie South Carolina. Florida held a 28 in the fourth and upset in itself. Swing pass, Womack. Ridden down by Chris Akins. Who would have figured that? The 300-pounder catching the racehorse from behind. Even Peruna suffering the effects of the heat. Haji Allen getting in on that play as well. There's an interesting young man whose goal is to make his number, number two, as famous as Jerry Gray's, one of the all-time great defensive backs at the University of Texas. Haji Allen trying to make a name for himself. 
Well, they went to the same high school, Lubbock Estacado. Same college, same position. Off the side of the foot and into the sixth row. I have never seen a punt go quite that haywire. Six yard punt. Goodness. Six yards forward, about 50 left. Seven officially. Goodness gracious. Coaches uh, having a visit with Scotty on the sideline. See if we can see what he does. The ball is dropped good. Came across the ball. Was it tipped? 82, get a piece of that? Didn't look like it. I think he just, uh, he almost whipped it. It went so kinda wide like, left. Kind of like one of my golf shots. They straight off the hosel. Yeah, we've all left. done that. All too often. Matt Davis in motion. Richard Walton to Wayne McGarrity. He will spin for about seven or eight yards to the 20-yard line. Wayne McGarrity missing a high school season because of the knee. And then in the first freshman preseason drills last year, another knee injury. So this is his redshirt freshman year out of Clark High School in San Antonio, a speedster who has regained just about all that speed. If only Chris Bordano were available. He's out for the year with a bad back. McGarity, a nice cutback, dragged down by Ahmad Hayes, but he'll have another Texas first down. Chris Bordano would compare to a guy like Zach Thomas. Just all over the field is going to get you 10, 15, 20 tackles every single week. And if he were able to team with Craig Swan, things would look very different on the defensive side for the Mustangs. Well, he looks like a linebacker. Look at that thick neck, broad shoulders. Uh, Coach Rossley uh, says that he is one of the best defensive players he's ever coached and uh, expects great things out of him in the next two years. He will be back, but not this year. First and 10 from the 14. Walton again for the end zone and uh, the corner of the end zone. It was too tall. Mackenmore tried a leaping grab. Couldn't hang on even if he had. The foot wasn't going to come down and down. So second and 10. Makovic still giving Richard Walton a chance to unlimber his arm. Coming I've been in. impressed with him. As the game's gone on, he's uh, gotten more confident, and uh, he's throwing the ball well, running the ball club well. Flags before the snap as we pause 10 seconds. Station identification on the Raycom Network. In the Cotton Bowl, it's 35 to 10, Texas. Mark off of five yards for procedure against Texas. To the line of scrimmage, now the 19-yard line, second down and 15. As soon as I brag on him, they have a five-yard penalty, but that comes about sometimes when the uh, quarterback uh, has not been working with the starting unit and the cadence is a little bit off. Texas led 21-3 at the half. Ponies closed it to 21-10. Texas looking for a third consecutive score. Sean Mitchell fighting the effects of the heat back in. May lose one. Back to the 20. Hit there by Craig Swan. SMU played that uh, very uh, strong play for Texas. They love that. Where they, uh, It's really a sweep. It's a counter-looking sweep that uh, pulls two linemen. But that's about as good as uh, SMU's played it all day long. Mitchell has the best rushing total by Longhorn in a couple of years. Phil Brown, 184, two years ago against Rice. Mitchell just under 180 here. On third down, Walton over the middle. And the catch made at the 10-yard line by 82 for Texas. Derek Lewis, a freshman tight end. About seven yards shy of the first down. They have two freshman tight ends are very high on Lewis is one and Derek Scott is the other. So the tight end position will remain well stocked for John Makovic for a few years. Now John was not happy with uh, that particular play.
on for what would be a 28-yard field goal is Dawson. He's been so prolific getting into the end zone. This is only his third field goal of the year if it hooks in, and it doesn't. It hooked, but it was already past the upright. Phil Dawson, for his career, from the 47-yard line in was 16 of 17 until that miss from only 28. Womack is just about the whole show, 125 of their 190 total yards. It's a story also of uh, penalties and turnovers, Dave. With that kind of uh, offensive output, you know, the score could be one of those that you talked about, the, the runaway. But uh, because of Texas' own mistakes and, and the turnovers, and a lot of those came about because of great effort by SMU. Womack crunched. How did he manage to hang on? Gray Mosier with the best timed hit of the day, and Womack hangs on to the ball. They'll give him the 15. Looks like Mosier's reading uh, the uh, playbook before Womack reads it. Great uh, effort, gets to the point of attack, makes a tackle. And luckily, Womack held on to the football. Ray Mosier questionable this week with a knee, one of many banged up defensive linemen. Thought for a while they might have to start him. The red shirt freshman who wants to be a pro rodeo star, a la his hero Walt Garrison. Sony Clark that time delivering the punishment to Womack. Boy, as the day goes on, Womack collects a few more bruises. I think the combination of Aikens and uh, Stoney Clark inside has been good for Texas. It was a good move for their staff. Uh, it, it shores up the inside, although these guys have had to play a lot of the football today. But it uh, gives their linebackers a freer range to move to the outside and to flow a little bit quicker. That helps the, uh, the defense, particularly on the perimeter. Tony sent four men wide, third and 16. Line to game to 30. They continue to feed Womack, and he continues to take the punishment. Mark Cooper combines with Dwight Kirkpatrick on the tackle. A couple of backup linebackers. It'll be fourth and ten. He just needs some help. He needs a few more threats like himself. Texas has done a good job adjusting to the offense of SMU. Remember at the outset, their idea was to throw into the flats, and they made some pretty good yardage. Linebackers have really done a good job adjusting out. That's because the uh, big boys inside allow them to do it. Yeah. Much better effort by Scotty. It could hardly be worse than the last time. Carter. Hog tied at the 44. The SMU tackle from Tyree Taylor, proudly wearing Eric Dickerson's number 19. 47-yard kick, 11-yard return. And with 9.09 to play in the Cotton Bowl, Texas leads it by 25. Today's game being brought to you in part by the Texas Lottery. Tonight's lotto jackpot drawing is for an estimated $10 million. And the intrepid Tommy Tate with a fine-looking young specimen who knows the rules better than Tommy. You must be 18 or older to enter. Tommy should know that. LSU ties South Carolina, coming from behind to do so. Florida only 28 in a win over Mississippi. I tell you, that was a nice looking young man. Uh, any relationship uh, of any friends of mine? Gosh, you know, there's a, a very strong family resemblance to one of your best friends. You know, one of the, the great stories of this game, uh, for me personally, is to see you bring Zach uh, to the game because of the great relationship you had with your father and the fact that you came to so many Texas SMU games and to carry that tradition on. This will be, in the near future, the last SMU Texas game. In about eight and a half minutes, that's right, the rivalry will be extinct after 73 meetings. Walton scrambles into the 48, it'll be third down. Hit by Wilbert Mitchell. 
I remember being on the very top row of the upper deck of the stadium back in 67 watching this one. Well, I think it's special that uh, you brought him to be with you today uh, on this, the last game. And uh, he, he's, been, uh, he's been excited about being here. And he got a free hat out of it. It's a uh, smorgasbord. On the 48, Darrell Wilson getting a series of tailback, and he stopped shy of the first down by Dewey Evans. Wilson, a sophomore from here in Dallas at Carter High School, coming into fall practices, listed as the starter, but he's been surpassed by Mitchell and McGarry. Dewey Evans, a redshirt freshman. This is Jackson Moore, the injured Mustang linebacker. Moore, one of many all-conference academic selections on the field today for both teams. Sophomore from Memphis, the second leading tackler. Clock is stopped with seven minutes and 40 seconds to go. As Moore is attended to, 35 to 10, Texas leads SMU. One of the great things about football during the state fair the culinary possibilities are endless. You step outside this stadium, you have some of the finest junk food offerings known to man. Fourth and one. Good long kick by Schultes. In fact, too long. He outkicks his coverage. Quentin Wallace came close to downing one at the one foot line in the first half and almost grabs that one, but it goes 47 yards. A net, however, of 27. That is a design play to uh, be able to get one man down, getting behind the ball, and uh, try to kill it inside the five-yard line. Got to get your thoughts on what Baylor did today. Almost their second straight shutout, 9-7, they beat Tech. Well, that was a big uh, victory for uh, Baylor. Uh, winning the first game, the first conference game, particularly against one of the contenders, uh, always puts you in a good position to move forward. They uh, have been playing extremely well defensively, and uh, to stop Tech for three quarters on scoring is, is a good chore. They really, uh, really can score the ball. They've got an excellent scheme and uh, got some prolific players as well. James chasing the snap back at the four-yard line. I think the snap was... Very catchable, but he just looked away, and next thing he knew, it was beyond him. A little bit high, but very catchable. His numbers today, 88 yards, all they managed through the air. Texas came in with the 70th ranked defense in the country, but SMU the 94th ranked offense. This is interception country. When you're backed up second and 25 uh, in your own end zone, uh, you're in interception jeopardy. So they'll keep it on the ground, and again, Womack pounded as soon as he gets the ball. Now, running into that line is also jeopardy itself. Uh, they haven't made about three inches inside on that uh, Texas defense, and uh, if they do not make the first down, which uh, it's going to be difficult to do without throwing the ball, then Texas, again, is going to have big field position. Clarence Martin, true freshman, Oceanside, California, where he attended the same high school as Bryant Westbrook. For third and 25, that loss back to the four. And they just want to avoid a turnover, so Womack heads left. About five yards, six-minute mark of the game and counting. SMU will have to kick it away again. Spike Dykes was talking this week about how tough that Baylor Tech game is as an opening conference game because if you win it, obviously it's a great springboard, but if you lose it, you got that and the whole conference schedule ahead of you to deal with. Yeah, it is a very difficult uh, time anytime you lose a conference game. We call it back to the wall because normally two's out, but last year, three losses and five teams tied for the championship. Chris Carter had a full head of steam when he made the reception of the punt and a return inside the 20-yard line of 20 yards. The kick only went 30. Scotty himself on the tackle on a net of just 10. 
The umpire does a good uh, bit of blocking down here for him as he makes a cut right behind the linebacker for the uh, referee. Scotty comes in to uh, finally stop him, but back the four-yard line into the wind. Fourth quarter, you're in jeopardy, and now field position flips. And for the first time, Greg Felix is the Texas quarterback. He is a senior who has never played a career backup from Post in South Texas. The give is to Daryl Wilson. No game action through his entire Texas career until today. And it's nice that he finally gets in. I'm going to tell you something, Dave. You know, you can't know how important that is to a youngster who has been out there for four years working, giving of himself. He's been running the scout team for uh, three and four years, and to have the chance to get in this game and to play, uh, it's meaningful. I appreciate uh, Coach uh, putting uh, a youngster like that in. Wilson stopped by Mac McKinney for no game. Felix behind with Walton, who came in early third quarter, went three of six, 47 yards and a touchdown. James Brown, the starter, 13 of 20, 172 yards, two touchdowns with three interceptions. All the Cornell Park. Dave, let me make another fourth point here. You know, we were talking uh, a moment ago about people running up the scores and the question is going on. Uh, Texas is in a position here where the things have happened to go ahead and put that score up there, which would make them look better, and folks would uh, uh, say, oh, boy, they really played well. But, but I tell you, Coach Makovic is concerned about those guys that have been out there working and playing, and I think this is a, a real insight into the kind of man Coach John Makovic is. Interesting comment he made this week. He said, you know, we probably get more credit than we should by the pollsters just because we're Texas. One of those schools like Alabama, Oklahoma, sometimes we're not as good as our ranking. And sometimes we're punished by the pollsters more than we should be, again, because of who we are. They pass up a field goal try, and on fourth down, Wilson may have come up about a foot shy. He needed the nine. I don't know if he got it. Official timeout. They have to measure. I don't think he's there. Well, like I said, if you go home hungry from the State Fair of Texas, it's your own fault. Are you going to buy me a snack after we finish? You know what sounds good to me is a corn dog. You haven't had one yet today. Invented here at the State Fair of Texas. Are you serious? The corn dog. Fletcher's That's corn great dog. information. SMU has held on down. They'll take over with 326 remaining. Trailing 35 to 10. Hold today at the Cotton Bowl, 35-10 Texas. SMU holds on downs at their 10-yard line. They will fall to one and four after their opening victory over Arkansas. Four consecutive defeats. Underneath catch and run for a first down by 85, Lamont Guillory. As Guillory is joined by mostly backups throughout the uh, offensive unit now for SMU. So Tom Rossley doing the same thing John McAvick did and getting some guys some experience. Well, it's important to do this. You always have to think about tomorrow and the next year. And uh, those youngsters that are over on the bench are someday going to be your players, your starters. And the more experience you can give them in a game-like situation, uh, it's good. And both in the case of Texas and SMU. Open man, but James on the run, unable to get the ball into the hands of Vaughn Dickerson, a sophomore from Houston. Chris James. Through the air now, 12 for 29, 101 yards. Womack has been superb, 24 carries, 106 yards. But from the looks of things, he may be done for the day. You know, I'm not sure that that's not one of the extraordinary performances of this year, going up against the Texas defense and uh, with the uh, lack of help because of injuries up front. That's a great performance. James in traffic, picked off, or was it? Did a knee touch. Let's see what they call here. Ron McKelvey made the grab and then looked up and saw nothing but pure green ahead of him. Now they wave it off and say he one-hopped it. This is a junior 
college transfer from L.A., Pierce Junior College, where he was an All-American defensive back. Nearly had the fingers on the one hand cut off. He was breaking up an assault after his senior year in high school. And because of that subsequent surgery and rehab, he missed the next two years of football and then became a junior college All-American, all because he tried to step into a fight and almost lost the fingers on one hand. Nowhere near Guillory, the intended target. Fourth and ten, they'll kick it away with 244 to go. Texas will improve its record to three and one, should improve their ranking, which is 21 coming in. They had it up as high as 13th in the AP poll, 10th in the coaches poll last week. And then Notre Dame's 55-27 victory. And then uh, scurrying backwards, but this should advance them a half or two. Scotty has had a strange afternoon. He's had a seven-yarder off his instep, a 25-yarder here that goes straight up the elevator shaft and straight down. And again, Texas starts well in SMU territory, but a flag is down near the 40-yard line. That type of punt indicates that the punter had his toe straight up instead of pointing in the direction of the kick. And uh, usually that'll turn that ball skyward like an elevator. You saw the indication holding Texas on the return. Will be their ball in their own end of the field. You saw holding. the Baylor win. Here's the kick. Ten yard penalty, first down. Shutout victory for Alabama over Georgia. And we have the final two and a half minutes to go in the Cotton Bowl where we come back. I feel much cooler. Thanks. Southwest Conference game is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. By Jack in the Box. By Dr. Pepper and your Dr. Pepper bottler. By Nations Bank. And by Dodge. Texas with two and a half to run out before they will improve their mark to three and one in 1995. And the second series of quarterback for Greg Felix, Wayne McGarity. A rather rude result in a loss of one yard hit by McKinney. Virginia a win, Michigan a win. Would improve their standings. LSU in an upset tied by South Carolina in Columbia 20 to 20 as they've reached their highest ranking of the 90s. Florida held to 28 points. Nebraska in the third, 20 to 7. Again, the, the run it up subject and not really one that will come up, I don't think, this week. Notre Dame 10 0 at Ohio State in the second quarter. A huge surprise in the motion. Jeffrey Clayton to the Ponies 47 yard line. Rice still up three at Army. We go under two minutes. Texas is well over 500 total yards. They've been able to rest some key people. Get the victory they expected. And they'll get ready to host Rice next week. SMU will take a welcome week off, and they'll be in College Station in two weeks to take on the Aggies. Another carry from McGarrity. They had planned uh, for McGarity to be a wide receiver last year. They moved him back to his high school position to tailback. Dave Mercury Hall, number nine, is a redshirt freshman. He's been on, on two uh, plays consecutively. They're probably going to have to take a look at him in that open date. Uh, he looks like he's a good prospect. McGarity again. Written down by Blake Perkins, a freshman from Mount Pleasant inside of a minute. Well, this is easy. Our Dodge player of the game today is the junior from Austin by way of Blinn Junior College. Sean Mitchell, 19 carries and 179 yards. Two touchdowns, including a 65-yarder. My aunties, everybody at home, 
The affable Trouton is one of the most popular players uh, in a long time to come out of an Austin High School program. Once again, McGarrity. The uh, Mitchell Williams backfield a success so far. Backing on 178 yards does not decrease your popularity in Austin. So John Makovic has the luxury of playing three quarterbacks and a 25-point victory in his first of two trips this year into the Cotton Bowl. They're back in a couple of weeks against Oklahoma. A good tune-up today to get ready to host the Rice Owls in a revenge meeting next week. Again, our final in Dallas, Texas 35, SMU 10. Back in the Cotton Bowl.